Greetings to you. In the last class, I had uh, discussed about the interferences in atomic absorption and I had told you that uh, the even though atomic absorption is a specific element phenomenon, there will be interferences because we are going to generate free atoms in the flame atmo atmosphere. So, the different types of interferences are spectral interferences where the resonance lines match transport in interferences there may be uh, different uh, height different other uh, different uh, heights there will be vapor phase transport vapor phase reactions etcetera are there in the transport interferences. Solute volatilization interferences are basically the um, something to do with the viscosity surface tension etcetera and then vapor phase interferences that is once the vapors are there in the flame they will be interacting with each other to produce molecular species such as CH, um, o OH, carbon and NH radicals and spatial distribution we have already discussed depending upon the vapor concentration the spatial distribution of the atoms will be different. So, there will be change in the absorbance because that is the one which we normally uh, measure. So, if the absorbance is different from what is expected then we call it spatial interference. Okay. Then uh, we have discussed all uh, in detail about all these things and uh, now we will consider how to correct some of the interferences that occur in atomic absorption. This is called background correction on flame atomic absorption spectrometry. So, the, what is required is whenever there is a change in the absorbance due to any extraneous factors, we correct those extraneous factors in such a way that the signal remains intact. So, most of the spectral interferences and all other types of interferences result in the attenuation of atomic absorption signal to some extent. This is what we have already told. I said any reduction in the absorbance or increase in the absorbance is interference. More than 10 percent absorbance increase or decrease is called as interference. So, in general, so in general the attenuation means reduction in the signal. So, in general this reduction in the signal varies from negligible levels to several percent may be 5 percent, 10 percent sometimes you may not even get a signal. So, it all depends upon the matrix elements. So, this signal is known more commonly as background absorption which can be easily estimated by aspirating a closely matching reference solution which does not contain the analyte. That means, we are um, doing uh, aspirating a solution which contains water as the blank. Now, what we want to do is if there are extraneous elements then we try to match the extraneous elements apart from the analyte. So, that becomes the matrix solution. So, um, here the absorbance of the reference uh, or blank as it is known it must be subtracted from that of the calibration standard as well as the samples because uh, in the blank there will be some amount of uh, absorbance that may be molecular absorbance, spectral interference whatever it is and that needs to be subtracted to get the correct analytical result. Alternately radiation from a deuterium lamp can be measured at the resonance wavelength. This is a very important aspect of background uh, correction. What we do is apart from hollow cathode lamp apart from hollow cathode lamp a we use a deuterium lamp. So, what is a deuterium lamp? We have uh, discussed in uh, spectrophotometry a deuterium lamp is a lamp made of hydrogen atoms uh, and then it gives you absorbance in all frequency ranges. So, the analytic absorbance at the analytical wavelength also is part of the hydrogen lamp. So, that uh, difference 
between the hydrogen lamp and the atomic uh, absorption lamp hollow cathode lamp we can subtract that from the deuterium lamp. So, this can be measured at the resonance wavelength to determine the background absorption. So, what we do is we take the sample and uh, aspirate it measure the absorbance in the deuterium lamp and measure the absorbance in the hollow cathode lamp subtract that and that is the co correction due to other extraneous matters. So, background correction in flame atomic absorption is always a slightly tricky business and most of the atomic absorption spectrometers have the hydrogen lamp or deuterium lamp as it is known along with the hollow cathode lamps and other uh, EDL or uh, whatever it is vapor discharge lamps etcetera. All these things are there along with hydrogen lamp deuterium lamp. So, radiation from deuterium lamp also passes through the flame and radiation from the hollow cathode lamp also passes through the flame. So, whatever is uh, whatever absorption occurs at the hollow cathode lamp is um, uh, is the sum of those two. So, if we subtract the background uh, from hydro hydrogen lamp then we get the actual atomic absorption signal. Okay. So, this is how the schematic configuration of a deuterium lamp background character can be measured at the resonance wavelength to determine the background absorption. What happens? I have a hollow cathode lamp here and then a deuterium lamp here and both of them um, I have a say, rotating chopper and then this is the absorb uh, uh, radiation from the hollow cathode lamp and this is the radiation from deuterium lamp. So, this rotating chop chopper once allows the radiation uh, as it rotates it allows alternately the radiation from deuterium lamp and hollow cathode lamp. Once it allows deuterium, deuterium lamp as the or chopper cuts the this thing hollow, uh, hollow cathode lamp radiation will pass through. The, so, I have a optics and other things remain the same in the atomic absorption uh, spectrometer. So, the radiation from deuterium lamp and hollow cathode pass through the same optics. So, I have a concave mirror here and then it passes through the flame and in the flame I have the aspirated sample and then this radiation it passes through to the monochromator. Okay. So, uh, when the radiation from deuterium lamp uh, passes through at the same wavelength whatever is the absorbance without this hollow cathode lamp absorbance is measured. And with the uh, when analyte is falling uh, analyte uh, chopper root clears the analyte wavelength then the absorbance from the atomic absorption is measured the difference is what corresponds to the lamp. So, the exits in this in this figure exit slit of the monochromator separates the resonance line from the emission spectrum of the hollow cathode lamp to the band pass width of 0.2 to 0.7 nanometers because that is the band pass width normally is present in almost all atomic absorption spectrometers. So, the intensity IPS this is a there is a little bit of uh, notations here, but nothing to nothing to be um, worried about not too much mathematics also. The intensity IPS of the primary source is equalized to the intensity ICS of the continuum source before the determination. So, that the ratio of IPS and ICS is unity initially whatever is the flame. Uh, absorbance and IPS the ratio is set to unity. That means, there is um, 
both of them match. So, for normal measurements less than 1 percent absorption from the continuous source is neglected for the ICS. That means, normal measurements less than 1 percent if it, if it is uh, absorbance ICS is neglected we do not need that. At higher absorbance IPS is attenuated proportionally to the concentration of the analyte. That means, at higher PS suppose it is 5 percent IPS is also adjusted to um, 5 percent. So, that the analyte concentration is not affected by the background. So, in effect ICS this is the sample serves as a reference beam. Okay. So, this is the mechanism of background correction. What I have here? Uh, I have shown you two C series here. One on the left side, primary source, etcetera, I have written. Here it is the continuum source. Okay. So, here this is my analyte line, this is the monochromator. So, only this line is selected and it passes through. Now, look at the my pointer, it passes through this, and then this is here. Um, both IPS and ICS signal, this is the analyte signal ICS and this is the IPS. So, if IPS is less than 1 percent or something like that, we neglect the ratio otherwise both of them are made equal. That means, the radiation coming from this and radiation coming from this, this is the continuum source that is deuterium lamp. Okay. So, both these are matched. So, total uh, absorbance corresponding to this without the sample is converted into this IPS is less than ICS. So, this much signal is attenuated and then what we do? We do this IPS is equal to IPS. This is by uh, done electronically you do not have to do much regarding this background correction because it is automatically automated. The electronics and the operations are designed. So, if IPS is less than ICS then it is neglected and so much is subtract you see the small triangle here. This small triangle corresponds to the background absorbance. So, this uh, a absorbance at this wavelength is subtracted corresponding to deuterium lamp absorption whenever there is no hollow cathode lamp. So, that means, it is the absorbance of the total background without it is not the atomic absorption it is the background absorption that we have to subtract anyway. So, this is how the mechanism of uh, background correction works and what we normally say is they you do not have to do much along with the hollow cathode lamp you switch on the deuterium lamp. So, electronics and other things will take care of the uh, background. Uh, so, background correction normally are with continuum sources that is like hydrogen lamp you can also use a xenon lamp also does not matter, but you have to choose the wavelength at which we are measuring that is for copper if you are using 224.7 for background also you have to adjust and select only that portion corresponding to 224.7 nanometer plus or minus 0.2 nano band pass width whatever is that comes. So, if the background correction is background uh, absorbance is more than 0.5 in absorbance units. What, uh, what are the normal units for absorbance in, at, in the atomic absorption? In the whole of atomic absorption, the absorbance is measured between 0 and log 2. Okay. 2 is the log, negative log of absorbance that is 0 percent is uh, 100 percent transmittance, 2 absorbance 2 is 100 percent transmittance. So, the units of measurement in atomic absorption are between 0 and 0.2. So, if it is more than 0.5 for the background then it is a little difficult to adjust to correct uh, the background coming from the sample. 
that is blank. So, the noise also increases by a factor of 2 or 3 that means, the signal noise that is uh, some amount certain amount of electrical noise and other things which we have already discussed that also increases by a factor of 2 or 3. This means, the signal to noise ratio decreases. Actually, what we need? We need the signal to noise ratio to increase for atomic absorption, but um, if the background is more than 0 0.5 that is the blank analyte shows absorbance of more than 0 0.5 then it is difficult to correct. So, we try to keep the background absorption less than 0 0.5 as far as possible which is to be subtracted from the hollow cathode lamp signal that is atomic absorption signal. Okay. So, we also have another way of handling um, background correction. Here the mechanism is entirely different. So, when an atomic absorption vapor is placed in a magnetic field that is atomic vapor uh, that, that means, what I do is I want to put uh, the flame around the flame I want to put two magnets. Okay. So, the I am putting the atomic vapor in a magnetic field that is of the order of about 10 kilo gauss uh, levels. Okay. So, in 10 kilo gauss levels uh, you put me uh, in the corner my photo. Yeah. So, when these terms the, the energy levels split I had already explained to you earlier that uh, sodium lamp in uh, whenever I put it has got two lines 589.6 and 589.0 nanometers. So, the if it is uh, not uh, there are two lines similarly all the energy levels split whenever I put a magnetic field. So, in the simplest case the spectral lines split into three components one is the central pi component another is two or three sigma components. Okay. So, the um, energy of the total energy of the pi and sigma components are same Tot some of the energies are same, but they are split into two different levels. Okay. And uh, these sigma and pi components are not to be confused with the atomic structure uh, pi or pi bonding and sigma bonding etcetera. These are energy level split and the symbols unfortunately are same, but we call them sigma and pi. So, sigma components are shifted to the right and left of the central pi component. So, the separation of the sigma components are of the order of about 0 0.01 nanometer both the uh, all the energies um, the sig signals are separated and the distribution of energy between sigma and pi components is approximately 25 to 50 to 25 that is 50 percent for pi and 25 percent for 2 sigma one is sigma plus another is sigma minus sigma plus and sigma minus uh, occur along the central wavelength along the frequency or to the left and right of the uh, signal. This effect is known as Zeeman effect. Okay. So, simultaneously what happens? The signal also is polarized that means, the uh, only one component will reach the detector. Now, we have sigma and pi components right. So, pi component if the uh, if the magnet is not um, is operating the it is polarized. So, sigma components are uh, pi components are perpendicular to each other. Okay. So, that you should imagine. So, uh, only one component 
is aligned along with the detector. So, some elements what happen they split into only three components this is known as normal Zeeman splitting and this occurs in barium, beryllium, calcium, magnesium, mercury, lead, palladium etcetera. Some elements split into more than one component more than three components, but in odd numbers 3, 5, 7 like that they split under the effect of magnetic field. Some elements split into even more components these are known as anomalous Zeeman effect. So, this effect can be used Zeeman effect can be used for background correction. So, what we have said is, uh, is that we conduct uh, place a magnetic field around and then in the magnetic field the hollow cathode lamp line is split into pi and sigma components. So, and it is polarized at a time either pi component will reach the detector or sigma component will reach the detector. Okay. So, when I have the um, sigma only when I have the magnetic field on only the pi component will reach when I do not have the magnetic field where that is when it is off all the absorbance will be taken place. So, the difference between the two gives you the background correction. So, this effect is known as uh, Zeeman effect and Zeeman effect can occur uh, normal, normal Zeeman effect or anomalous Zeeman effect. Okay. So, uh, here I am showing you the splitting of uh, common elements in atomic absorption. Uh, we will study this a little later in the next class. Thank you.